Electric cars have, of course, been around for some time now. Traditionally, however, because they lack range, tend to go slower and have dubious safety features, their usability has, well, been somewhat limited. That is now changing. And with new battery technology becoming available, the new Citroen EV reflects the current state-of-the-art electric motoring. Based on the popular Citroen C1, the EV is the first production electric car providing the motorist with all the comfort and safety features that is expected. It comes with either three doors, or like this one, with five doors. There's plenty of room for four people and good boot space too. Most importantly, the EV is a car that is crammed full of safety features. Airbags for both the driver and front seat passenger. ABS brakes and front and rear crumple zones. What is different though is there is no fuel filler, just a socket that you plug in at night. What's more, this is a car that costs virtually nothing to run. An overnight charge costs around 90 pence. You don't pay road tax, and if you drive it in London, you don't have to pay the congestion charge. You can also park in many places for free, potentially saving the owner thousands of pounds. The motorist is also reducing his carbon footprint and helping the environment with absolutely no emissions coming from the car. It almost sounds too good to be true, but what does it drive like? Let's take Evie for a spin. Okay, I turn the key, the lights come on, but there's no noise, it's really quite eerie. Foot down on the throttle and off we go. And it's pretty lively off the mark. no gears to worry about and I'm up to the speed limit pretty quickly and in complete silence. One of the things that's different about electric cars and the EV in particular is that you get something called regenerative braking. This means that when I take my foot off the throttle the electric engine turns into a generator and charges the battery. It also helps to slow the car meaning you hardly have to touch the brakes. This feature helps make the car particularly efficient, extending its range to 75 miles or so between charges. Let's see how we get away from these traffic lights here. Wow, performance is very adequate for city driving and so smooth. Well, let's see what it's like on the dual carriageway. Now, previous generation electric cars that I've driven haven't been great on dual carriageways or motorways because you can only get about 40 miles per hour out of them and tend to get snarled up in trucks and buses. Well, here we are at 50 and still accelerating strongly. Past these two cars, no problem. Outside lane and a good steady 60 miles per hour now. It certainly feels comfortable on a dual carriageway and very different from previous electric cars. Now, one of the huge benefits in London is that you can park on the street in Westminster completely free. There are a number of concessionary rates for off-street and resident parking as well. There are also a growing number of charging points springing up across London and the Mayor is committed to installing 25,000 of them over the next few years. Ah yes, there's one. Let's park up and see how it works. I take my cable out of the boot, plug it into the car, and then with a key fob like this, I open the socket and plug it in. It really is that easy. I can park my car here 
and go shopping or go for a meeting, knowing all the time that my batteries are being recharged. It really is that easy. And best of all, I'm not paying any parking charges. There's no doubt in my mind that this is the future. The EV makes electric motoring a practical and convenient way of getting about. This car has the latest lithium ion batteries, which last up to seven years, and overall maintenance costs should be lower than a conventional car. For running around town, the EV is hard to beat, and my running costs are close to zero. No more trips to the petrol station to pay 40 or 50 pounds for a tank full of petrol. I'm totally sold on the proposition, and the EV is the first electric car that makes this a reality. In fact, many pundits believe in five years' time, perhaps 20% of all new cars sold will be electric. Something tells me it could be sooner than that.